Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on long run aggregate supply. In the long run, the ability of an economy to produce goods and services uh, is based on the, the state of production technology and also, crucially, the availability of and the quality of factor inputs. You've probably come across this kind of topic before when you looked at the production possibility frontier and the factors that cause the PPF to shift outwards over time. And that's a, certainly a relevant bit of economics to think about, except we're going to express it in a slightly different way using a long run aggregate supply curve. Now, this is drawn as a vertical line because it's assumed to be independent of the general level of prices. So YP, or potential output, is the, if you like, an estimate for the potential supply side capacity of a country in the long run. And what we're hoping is that curve will shift to the right, maybe year on year. So a movement from LAS1 to LS2 is an outward shift of aggregate supply. And it signifies an increase in the country's productive potential. When you focus on supply side policies, you're hoping to find some policies which are effective and successful in causing this kind of shift. Let's have a look at some data for the UK. This information shows the annual growth rate of the components of trend growth. So trend growth is the estimated rate of growth of a nation's productive potential. And the data shows uh, figures for the UK and it finds that productivity growth on the left hand side there is the main driver of potential output over the long run. The main measure, by the way, of productivity used here is output per person hour. So you can see, for example, in 2015, that potential productivity was rising at 1.4%. There was no real change in potential average hours worked or the employment rate. There was, there was a population growth uh, factor there. Uh, with a bit of rounding, the estimate is that the potential output of the UK was going to grow by just over 2% a year. Indeed, that 2% figure is quite important. It's edging up in 2016, 2017. But notice there that most of that's due to the rise in productivity. There's a key point here. The potential output in the UK is fundamentally determined, pretty much anyway, by how quickly we can increase our productivity. So the UK economy tends to grow in the long run by about two, two and a half percent per year. What are the key factors that affect aggregate supply in the long run? Well, I think the most important one we've already mentioned already, and that is productivity. Output per person employed or output per worker hour. There are various ways of measuring this. But if as a country we can lift the efficiency of our factor inputs, both labour and land and capital, then we can drive an increase in productive potential. A second important factor is the labour market participation rate. The big question, the big challenge for many countries is to get more of their population of working age actively searching for work and able and willing to find paid work. So countries which can successfully grow their labour supply, to get more people into employment, will tend to grow more quickly. Third factor relates to the supply side benefits from successful innovation and from having an entrepreneurial culture. Two key factors that drive competitiveness, particularly in global markets, and especially if you can find new businesses that can scale up very quickly to become global brands. And a fourth factor, we've mentioned so far productivity, labour market participation and enterprise. A fourth factor is investment. For a country's productive potential to increase, a nation does need to invest sufficiently in new capital goods. That could be infrastructure for the telecommunications sector. It could be new investment in the water and sanitation industries. It could be new housing. It could be new schools, new hospitals, new motorways, new factories, or generally. But capital investment is important. And of course, some of that may come from the government, the public sector, 
And in many cases, a lot of it comes from foreign direct investment and injection of demand. So I think this slide's quite important and it might well be worth printing off for your revision notes. Here are four really important factors that affect a country's long-term aggregate supply side capacity. We'll just have a little look at some data for the UK. Our population growth isn't huge. There is a natural change. It's the birth rate minus the death rate. And you can see that uh, in the last five or six years, the natural rate of population growth, having been quite low from 1991 through to the turn of the millennium, has actually increased quite rapidly. So our population is growing in natural terms by about 200,000 people per year. Now, some of that, of course, is the result of migration. Net migration into the economy is the difference between immigration in blue minus emigration in red. And of course, this has become a big uh, political as well as economic issue in recent times. In 2013, for example, net inward migration climbed above 300,000 for the first time. And most forecasts, be forecasters believe that under current policies, uh, net inward migration will continue to be a significant factor driving the, product, uh, the population size up. And we'll cover migration economics, of course, in a separate topic video for you. I mentioned that the participation rate is an important aspect. So this data, for example, looks at the labour force aged, people aged 15 and older, uh, but below the age of retirement as well. And it looks at the percentage of those people who are in work. And notice here that there's a big difference in the participation rates. Uh, Qatar, you know, UAE and Kuwait, of course, are in a sense quite different countries because of their fast growth and their need for many, many workers in construction, for example. But typically countries like Singapore, New Zealand, Australia, around two thirds of their population age 15 and above are actively in the labour market, i.e. in work or looking for work. However, uh, there are other countries where the participation rate is significantly lower. A good example, well, UK is 62%, but uh, Germany just under 60%. But look further down, look at countries like Greece, and Italy, where the participation rate in the country is actually hovering around the 50% mark. And uh, a low participation rate, for whatever reason, can hold back a country's productive potential. The other factor that I mentioned, and we'll cover this again in a separate topic video, is the importance of productivity. So here's a measure of labour productivity. It's output per worker employed measured in real terms uh, at 2011 prices and converted to dollars and expressed at PPP, purchasing power parity exchange rates. So essentially these are the countries with the highest productivity or highest value of output per worker in the world. Luxembourg is an outlier, Singapore, Qatar, right up there. The United States has very high productivity. Just on the left hand side, I've put their Human Development Index ranking for interesting comparison. The UK has a lower level of output per worker, around $70,000 on a PPP basis. And that's similar to Australia and Canada and uh, close to, to Spain as well. So these are some of the richest countries in the world and countries with huge supply side capacity and potential in part because they have a high absolute level of productivity. So we've looked at some of the factors that affect long run aggregate supply. And I think uh, what I'd like you to take from this topic video is the importance of the four key factors that drive productive potential. The quantity of capital and labor, so the level of investment and the size of the labor market participation rate, the importance of innovation and enterprise, the productivity of labour and capital and natural factors such as uh, the birth rate and the natural growth of population. It's quite important for countries to try and increase their long and aggregate supply over time. And for the UK at the moment, it looks as if our growth rate, our trend growth is around two to two and a half percent per year. 
Okay, thanks for joining in on this topic video. I hope it was useful and uh, see you again sometime soon.